the guardian, the guardian angel of God himself. Isn't that amazing? And yet sin was found in him. The Bible says that he was a seal of perfection. He was beautiful beyond compare. It was adorned with every resemblance of every precious stone. And he was wise. And perfect in all of his ways. He was the seal of perfection. God used him as a pattern. And God himself gave him the signet. When you look up the word seal there it says the meaning of it is signet of God. The signet means the impression of God. It means the impression of his authority, of who he is, of his name, of his image even. Was given to Lucifer, the bringer of light. And yet Lucifer rebelled against God. He was the first rebel. And he rebelled against God. Not only did he rebel against God, but he led a rebellion. He turned through his lying tongue and through deception, subtle speaking. And the other one-third of the angels were unsuspecting. They didn't know. What was going on yet? Satan was carefully moving them into a position to resent God. Moving them into the place where they would no longer trust God. That they would cast a suspicious eye in the direction of their creator himself. They could no longer be ministered to because they didn't trust the minister. They didn't trust the chief minister, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. They couldn't receive his word because they had been poisoned by the deceptive lies of Lucifer coming little by little, you see. That's how it came about. So they fell and eventually they became adversaries of God. And this Lucifer was able to entice them and stir them up in rebellion against God to go and try to take the throne of God in his behalf. And they ascended to heaven. And the Bible says that there was war in heaven. In the abode of God, there was war. And God called upon his mighty angel, Michael, which means who is like God. And he sent Michael forth with a whole host of mighty warring angels. And they defeated Lucifer and his minions. And Jesus himself, while he was on earth, he told his disciples, I saw Lucifer fall. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Crash to the ground. Crash to the earth. The war didn't stop. Did you think it stopped? Do you think the war was over? No, the war isn't over. There's not war in heaven. There's peace and harmony in heaven because Satan is not there. But you know there's war on this earth. Don't think that you're not at war. Wherever the rebel forces are, there is war. Matter of fact, what the Bible says in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 12, says that the beast, which is possessed by Satan himself in the end time, will make war with the saints of God. Revelation chapter 13 says that he will deceive the whole world. The dragon will possess him and give this beast all power. It will be Satan working through a man. And he will make war with the saints. And for a short period of time, God will allow the saints to fall into his hands. And he will overcome the saints, but the saints are victorious. But many will be martyred. But that's victory. Amen. We live in a fallen world. Rebellion is anti-God. Rebellion prevents the ministry of God. Did you know that? Did you know that the Apostle Paul, through inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Romans chapter 13, says all authority comes from God, every single authority. You go before a judge, it comes, his authority comes from God. 
All authority comes from God. You men, you husbands, your authority comes from God. You are who you are because God said so. Parents, your authority comes from God. Because God says so. Anything outside of that is rebellion. And rebellion is a piece of Lucifer. Now you're going to have one of the two about it. Whose side are you on? Who are you fighting for? I'm saying you're fighting for one or the other. Now the enemy is rebellion against the authority of God. The enemy is rebellion, and the enemy is ever-present and is always there at the gateway of our mind. It wants in. It wants into our life. It wants into our church. It wants into our land, and in fact, it's all throughout the land. It wants in our families to destroy the family, you see, to cut off the ministry of God because God says all authority, everyone who holds a position in the world has, is there because of the authority of God. And he says, that is my minister. doesn't matter if he's corrupt or not. It's still a minister of God because of the authority. God will deal with the corruptness. But we have no right to rebel against authority. We submit to God's authority first. And any authority that tells us we can't bow the knee to Jesus, well, we choose God. Amen. We always choose God first. But authority comes from God. And the Bible, he says, that's my minister. In other words, that's my servant. That's my service. And you can't be served by God without submitting to authority. And to submit to authority, then you have to crush the rebellion. Now, when the rebellion took a, went up to heaven, God sent Michael and his archangels, and he crushed the rebellion and sent Satan down to the earth. Now, the battleground is here, you see. And the whole creation is, is in a struggle for survival, you see. All the animal kingdom, the earth itself is struggling to survive, and God is sustaining it now. Satan will destroy it. Satan is a destroyer. He wants to destroy everything that is good. Amen. Now you cannot war against Lucifer and the rebellion being in rebellion. You can't be a rebel without a cause. There is always a cause. And it's his cause. It's the devil's cause. It's not God's cause. Re the rebellious are active agents for Satan. That's just as simply the way it is. There's no other way around it. That's the truth. And the wrath of God rests upon the children of disobedience. And the reason anyone disobeys is, you know, the, the, the fruit of, of dis rebellion. Re disobedience is a fruit of rebellion. Amen. Turn with me to Romans chapter 13. 